super schmuck. economic opening for Dark. I gotta say, I, I've been so critical. I've cast so much Dark, and I love him. And, and you know when you love a player so much, you get a little bit critical of yeah. like his early game inefficiencies? He's been so clean in his openings today. It is actually uncharacteristic how fast he is droning up. That third is so quick. He's droning so hard. And he's clearly looking to not do what's expected. I'm saying watch out for roach aggression. We're saying watch out for mass roach bushes. It's link speed. It's a third base. It's good creep spread. This is about as solid as you could possibly go. Dark is clearly looking to buck the expectations of his opponents. He did it earlier today against Hero as well. And I think it's a great way to open up the series, especially after sniping that Reaper. And hopefully he can get this creep across this river. There's only seven queens out in this game. Dark didn't go too high on the queens. He wants to get that economy up. And then, of course, have an abundance of Zergling production. He's playing a forecast style, which means he's going to have just masses of Zergling Baneling. And I think he really wants Maru to overextend and throw some of these units away so he can counterattack. Yeah, those few queens moving forward. Medivacs do lift up. They are going to move into the main base. A spore crawler there, instantly in position to deal with that and just to dissuade the Medivacs from committing further. We're about to hit those 1 1 upgrades, and with that, of course, maybe Maori will ramp up the aggression a little bit. Dark does not miss a beat, but though, going into his plus 2 melee. I imagine his plus two carapace will be very soon to follow, accompanied now by Balen Speed on the way. And we actually have a little bit of a run by coming through. Now Maru's army is still nearby on the left side. That upper left Whoa. pulse is maybe a little bit overwhelmed. He's got a few helis to help out too. And Maru's just going to stand and fight. He can lift up when he feels he needs to. That's going to be now, but already nine, ten SCVs going down. What a crazy attack. Just mass Zerglings right with 1-1 one, one finishing. He says, guess what? You don't have your upgrades yet. I do, even getting a few depots on top of it. Maru stims his entire drop home just to re-establish control over his third base. And Dark behind it, 66 workers. He's still not playing a high worker count because he wants to always have just a huge army, a very mineral-focused force. And that's going to give him enough numbers to both defend the drops and backstab at will, not to mention the quick infestation pit. Fast ultras are absolutely in his sights. Yeah, still this bottom right side a little bit unprotected by, you know, creep in front of it. So that's going to be a cancel here from Dark. Just gets it down. We'll scan to once again. Keep that issue in play. The lack of creep in that bottom right hurting Dark. But otherwise, yeah, just great. Just finds that moment where he has that upgrade lead, gets across, does some damage. And you're right. He just wants to play with a ton of units here because he wants to make sure, hey, look, I'm ready to deal with any of your attacks. You can't overwhelm me if I play like this. And if I can just slowly get up to ultras and so on, I can break any kind of continued aggression that you usually try and do. Yeah, great spread on the units for Dark. He's getting a little bit more creep out there. And of course, Maru on this small map's done such a good job of slowing that creep down. And he does have a drop on the left side as well. It's unloading, getting ready to move forwards. The Hive has started. 2-2 two -two is almost finished. And that's going to open up another window. I would not mind Dark going for another giant Ling Bane attack with 2-2. Two -two. You got to remember, though, that there are tanks on the high ground. Maru is very aware that this might be coming. So he's got one tank behind it his drops it's just a handful of marines on either side everything else is set up in a super defensive stance because he senses that dark wants to pounce yeah this uh, medevac job trying to find a way but dark's obviously super on top of it and his marriage is going to continue on through extra factor coming in fourth base knowing he can't get too aggressive off the three bases just setting up for the future instead because we know Maru, you know, he will be happy to just sit back and play this long if that's what he feels his best chances. Tutu's finishing, Wardy. Yeah. He's about to go. Dark wants to go for a giant attack here. But Maru, he's, he's trying to turtle up at home. The sensor tower making Dark second guess himself. And I think with, for good reason. These drops are very annoying. Oh, he's going for it. Dark's going for it. He's pulling the trigger. And he's going to dive on that third base. The tank's trying to defend in the natural and in the high ground. But a bunch of them going down. Bailing's breaching the natural wall. Oh no, I mean, yeah, Maru has to completely evacuate the third base. The surprisingly low amount of work is going down so far, but you know what? There's still Ling Bane here, and it's in the natural expansion now. Maru has too wow. many units out on the map, and Dark is just going to crush on through. Once again, Dark with the scouting. Oh, his overlord positioning is so good on these maps. Yeah, man, considering in some of the early interviews, he's like, oh yeah, I've got to go study the maps now. Well, I feel like <laughs> one of the things he studied is where he should put his overlords and where to get them very quickly, because... He just keeps on nudging in, getting perfect information on the speed of that third base, and that completely frees up his openings to do as he wishes. Does he feel he can be aggressive? He can do that. If he feels as though now he can just hold down that drone key, get the bases set up, go into that mega eco, and then hit later with a very strong economy opening, he can do that too, and that seems to be his preference at the moment. Game, I see a lot of reactors being built right now. I think we're going to see him swap back into that Widowmind style. Yeah, and that's exactly what you want to be playing here against, like you say, Ling Bane. 
it will just give you a bit more freedom. And it makes Dark Second guess some of these fights. He can't just run in for the wraparound immediately. He has to figure out where are those mines? Are they burrowed? Do I need to be splitting? Do I need to send a few units forward? And that can just be the extra half second or so you need as Mario to get the pre-split to decide whether you're fighting or not. So, yeah, I love it. Widow Mines are definitely going to be the better option here. And for now, we'll see if it's going to work out. He will be again behind on 1-1. One, one. There's Dark, 62 drones, making a good amount of lings. So he's setting up to potentially go across the map. He keeps building those lings at the moment, man. And even just using this to shut down the first pressure, right? So you just have an abundance of lings. You shut this down. It keeps your creep spread going. On a map like Cosmic Sapphire, keeping that creep going, it is just a huge investment. It is so important, but he's setting up for the huge backstab. This is such a good style. The 60 drone, mass link bane. He's going to go for the huge backstab. Oh, the door's no. open. It's open. Maru completely caught with his pants down. Uh, he's going to do nothing against the queens on the other side. He's into the main base as well with just a few links. The SCV massacre is going to be very real. One widow mine oh. does connect, but also on the SCVs. Maru is in so much trouble. 26 workers and Dark is just demolishing him here in game number two. He's not even used Banelands yet, but now he's got a couple ready to go as he's going to use these over here to help out against the Marines and Maru just cannot catch a breakdown. 30 workers now in this game. Oh, this is such a brutal timing. Two games in a row. There is no way Maru was expecting it. It's a surprise tactic. He does it a second time in a row, catches Maru with even more damage than the previous game. And Maru <laughs> is going to be just thrown through a loop. This is devastating. Dark going first, just annihilating him. And you know what this, this throws me back to? Do you remember when Clem was on like a 50 game TVZ win streak? You yeah. know who ended it? Dark. Dark. And it was with this exact same style, low drone, always having way more Ling Bane, waits for you to move out across the map and just a flood of Ling Bane rolls in. It's such a good way to play in a tournament. It just doesn't let the Terran do what they want as well, right? The Terran's like, I've got to take control. I've got to be on the map because if not, he's going to get away with greed. But he's not being greedy. So then you go across, you run into Queens. It's like, oh, well, that's not so bad. But then the counterattack hits you. Yeah. And if you're not perfect on the defense, and even if you are perfect on the defense, it's hard to deal with. It just takes the initiative or, or the kind of the normal way of thinking for a Terran play and just kind of ruins it, really. Puts their attention in the wrong place exactly. at the wrong time. And ZVT, right? It, it, oh, no! exactly what we're talking about right there. Banelings, just as he's dealing with the fight on the front, rolling into that third down on 43 SCVs up against the 74 of Dark. Dark's also got Hydralisks coming out to round out this style. They're going to be great covering such a wide spread on this map. Dealing with the Widow Mines, they also outrange them. Infestation Pit will allow him to tech towards Lurkers as well. Maru, though, he's kept the army supply even which means, hey, it's not that bad on the army, but he needs to do something with it and he needs to do something soon. If he can't slow down Dark, Dark's army is just gonna get way bigger than his very quickly. Feelings is gonna hit this, uh, well, wall off, but Banes are here to bust it down as well. Widow Mine on the side, at least stops a few of these Banes. He splits against the next one, only one Bane falls. And now we are once again here to fight. These Widow Mines go down before they can Whoa. shoot. And this third base is just once again fully evacuated. We're killing units across the map as well. Lair quickly from Dark, not wasting any time on that one, so maybe that's a different kind of aggression we are going to see from him. He will have Link Speed finish, so Lair on their way up, taking some extra gas right now, and just prepping to maybe be aggressive. Oh, what a scout from Maru gets oh, into yeah. the main, and that's the exact information that he needs. Now it could be two base muter, it could be a Nidus Worm all in. I think once you're scouted, the Nidus definitely loses power. Nudus does become more of an option. It's going to be an interesting way to mix it up here on Moondance. Ling's getting a great scout off and a run around. Going to get the Marine as well. Oh, no. Marine going down. These Ling's are going to continue to cause chaos. This is now so much mining time lost for Maru. And these Ling's getting perfect information of just what add-ons are or are not building on these structures. So good info from Dark. His last scouted, though, what will he decide to do with that information being known to Maru? He is just going to set down the Spire. So a super quick Spire is going to be the choice. Tries to put in a dodgy position to scout. Mutalisks are flying out. Those missile turrets better start really quick, Wardy. Mm -hmm. He's got, I mean, extra racks on the way. Starting 1-1, one, one, but we would love to see a couple missile turrets. Cover these mineral lines. Just make this defense that much easier. He just keeps missing the information he's looking for. Hasn't seen the Mutas yet. I just don't think it's a bad assumption to make, so let's see what he can do. Oh, These mutas are about to show up. Oh, they're going to do so much, Wardy. They're going to do so much damage. Yeah. There is no missile turrets. There's one Viking and 10 Marines with no stim. They fly in the back and they find a bunch of fresh mules and SCVs. So much damage already. Eight SCVs falling. 
Yeah, I mean, Maru's face instantly was like, oh, come on, right? Like, he just knew the moment these flew in that this was already going to be bad for him. 10, 11, 12 SEVs going down, a few Marines as well, and we're just getting started, really. These Mutas, they've not really taken any damage. They've still got full life on them. Going to find some SEVs at the front, and once again, Dark is just finding early advantages to play with here. I mean, this is... This is a reckoning it's right now. devastating damage. I mean, obviously, like, Maru must have just been... Uh, must have been thinking they were going to come in 20 seconds later. That's it. It's literally yeah. just... It's a missed timing issue on his part, where he was like, yeah, this could be two base muta, but no, nah, I should be okay. I remember he built that tank for safety. He built the Viking to help clear up overlords. None of this stuff was necessary against the build that Dark was doing. And it feels like Dark is just one step ahead in the mind games. He's gaining momentum in this series. Maru is on a slippery slope right now. Maru might feel like, hey, I need to just get some counter damage on, so at least I'm the one picking where and when the fights happen. With this much creep spread out, though, it's a dangerous proposition. Just gonna start pushing through this center of the map. He turns back around to try and protect his siege tank. One meter goes down, but so does one of the tanks. And the less splash damage there is, the tougher this is gonna be. Dark wastes no oh! time at all and jump in on this. The bait start to connect, and he is gonna continue to chase for a wrap around. Now, those Marines should be okay for now, but without any tanks, moving back on creep is gonna be so dangerous. Next wave of Ling Bane ready to go, and Maru is turning around to run. Yeah, Maru's got to stop pushing there. This is this is wild. Uh, the fact that he's still building siege tanks as well instead of widow mines, it it, it really is crazy. Ling Bane mute is so good against this army. Maru's trying to overwhelm Dark here. And I mean, Dark's production was low for a little while, but he's got his fourth hatchery up, his fifth hatchery going up in the back as well. Dark's production is off the chain. Yes, right now, you've got that, that low upgrade uh, situation for Dark, but that's going to change in a few seconds. I, I think, yes, you want to take advantage of the window. The window is closed. And Dark is going to close his jaws on top of this army. Here we go. Muta's legs, Bane's crashing into the army of Marin. There's just nothing he can do. He tries to run, but every single medevac is left exposed. There's a few Marines that do get to survive this, but look at the damage dealt, the tank's all gone, the medevac count, actually better than I thought it would be. A couple of those survived on low HP, but the problem is Doc is already built into the next wave of this that's going to come crashing on through. 46 lings, 14 banes in production, and Maru has no way to stay on this side of the map. Yeah, he's got to pull back. He's got the Widow Mine production on the second factory. 2-2 two -two does start up. The worker advantage is not too bad, and you put a big dent in the creep. This gives you a playable situation as Maru. The problem, of course, is the fact that you've only got Marines. You've got one tank, and your first Widow Mine's popping out. So you're in a very fragile situation against Ling Bane Muta. If Dark can start sliding some Zergling run bys in, that's going to cause you massive problems. He's going to go up to 26 Mutalisks. And more beyond that, he's just added a couple more again. He just believes that the Mutalisk count can just overwhelm Maru in this game. He is now maxed out, and if Maru steps foot on creep, he is gonna pounce once again to try and pincer in and get something done. For the next few moments, he might be behind a few upgrades. 2-2 will be finishing shortly from Maru, and it's be about 30 seconds or so until Dark's own 2-2 will finish. So, a little bit of an upgrade time here for Maru. That's what he is setting up for right now. This big 2-2 attack, there's no fourth base behind this. He's really looking to win the game on the back of these upgrades. Maru is really feeling very all-in right now. He's got a 2-2 timing, and he wants to win the game with this. He's still only on three bases, 64 workers. Dark does shave off some Marines on the left side. Very well done. He doesn't want to overcommit. He just wants to bait out the stims, drag it out, and bait by another 30 seconds. His upgrades will be finishing up shortly, but the Evos, the Evos are exposed. Yeah. Okay, Carapace upgrade gonna go oh. down. That's one of the more important ones here. So the Carapace denied. The plus two melee might be able to finish. Dog is gonna come oh. in as he is gonna have the Mutas on the flank. Banes are going all over the place. Widow Mine's connected on the Mutalis. If they can just get rid of enough anti-air, he can maybe overwhelm with the Mutas from there on out. For now, Maru stands strong. There are not currently any Balins ready to go. 30 morphing he needs these to fight these marines but he's gonna lose a base at the very least the muters though they do come in from behind they clean up a few widow mines in a siege tank and the plus two melee did finish dark needs to rebuild those evo chambers in the back ling bane coming in the bailings have morphed remember this is a desperate push and the bailings they're gonna get on top of these marines he's gonna force the lift up and now muters can try and chase but he lost so many of the mutalists he's only got five muters remaining there's one super low oh. hp men in back full of units can dog find it he's continuing forward it's now unloading that's the Rog low HP medevac, he's gonna get it with a few marines left in. Dark is still chasing Maru down, but he will have to bust through a wall off if he wants to continue this attack. There's no fourth base though, and Dark, he says, I may have lost my fourth, but I've got a fifth, a sixth, a seventh base up. I'm totally fine right now. I can just move my workers over to those. That Dark though, he's maxed out. I would say the big weakness of Dark in this scenario is his creep spread. He's only got three queens and he's just not re-spreading it in the middle. 
This game's gonna go a little bit longer. Maru's trying to just get one more super maxed out army. Dark's trying to counter attack right now. Yeah, he is gonna get straight into this base right here. Units coming in from the oh, right side. No. Units from the left, but it's mostly just Lings. I mean, the attack at the front doesn't do so well, but it's the Ellings and the mineral lines that are the problem. And the Bane's going after so many SCVs. And here are the Bane lanes. Oh. Now from Dark, will it do enough going after this Thor as well? The split back from Maru will be good enough. 3-3. Three, three. He's got 3-3 yeah. three, three kicked in just before that against plus one carapace. That made such a big difference. Those Bailings were dying way quicker than Darks used to. He was like, why are they getting gunned down so fast? That attack was an anti-timing. Now his plus two carapace is going to finish, but Dark is on the ropes. Maru might actually be able to get it done now. Yeah, Dark getting a little bit too aggressive there, and now Maru coming across the map. Again, plus two carapace moments away. We're going to use these Banes down the ramp. We've got one more round of Banelings morphing in, but some of them Ooh. getting cancelled. Ling's counterattacking again. Maru's economy will be shredded. He oh is pretty much all in as the Thors delete the Mutalists. Oh my lord, they just popped an entire pack of Mutas there. The Widow Mines not getting the big booms that they wanted, but the Medivacs with the saves. The Mutas unable to punish it because they all got shot down. The Ling run by on Maru's Main base? Fourth base? <laughs> I don't know what you call that. A lot of those uh, SDVs went down. Maru's economy is still so weak, but he's up in army supply. Dark has got a hive on the way, but he, he doesn't have any actual hive tech coming in. It's still 3-3 three, three versus now 2-2 two, two, Ling Bane Muta. It's a way better composition. The medevac count's preserved. Maru is still somehow in this game. He really is, but time is ticking. I know he's going to trade efficiently, but Dark is over double the work account and he's got the basis to keep those workers on as well trying to set off this widow mine here as he sends a few banes forward softens up marauders which isn't exactly ideal for the banes got a couple corruptors coming out something a bit sturdier in the sky to keep working through those medivacs during the fight he sends some units forward again he's got a massive oh! counter attack of banelings 16 going down and here comes the main attack now as well does he have enough over here the couple muters do what they can but it's so many marines and maru is not gonna be stopped dog will not be able to stop him at all and it looks like Maru will power through to potentially win game three. A two hit point Thor surviving in the midst of that. So much fire heavily wounded but not done yet and we see the power of this army. I mean was that Baneling run by awesome? Yes but you're damaging an already super wounded economy. I think Dark needed to give, give up that base and fall back. Yeah, give up, fall back, deal with the one big fight, just get as much up as possible right then and there. He's still trying to deal damage to Maru. He's on 13 SCVs, you don't need to. He just needs to live, but he doesn't have the unit count. Widow Mines are stopping Baneless from morphing in. Maru is continuing to push on forward into this natural. Queens are in trouble. The handful of Baneless will not do anything here, and Maru pulls it back. On the way, Queens deflecting the Reapers very effectively so far. Yeah, that Reaper gets pushed back through into the center of the map. Going to come around the bottom side. There's a couple of Hellions popping out. Starboard going to begin to build a Viking, and we see extra gas coming down. Oh, yeah, it's a third gas geyser, right? Yes, it That is. means we're going to see a fusion core. We're going to see battle cruiser. Oh. <laughs> I mean, there, I mean, Mac, Mac, it goes. We would say we want to see it. There we go. That's the fusion core SCV. They're right there. There we go. The Hellions are still picking off creep tumors on the right side. Plenty of Zerglings coming out, which is going to help defend the Hellions. Very important there, but eight queens. Here we go, BC on the front. Wow, okay. Hey. Gonna just dive in there. That's plenty of queens. I don't think this is a good teleport for Maru. No, it's not gonna kind of pull anything apart at all. And yeah, everything is just here to defend it. So Maru will not find much at all with this first attack in. Now, obviously, Doc knows what he's playing against exactly, and he's just gonna be adding on some extra lings. Make sure you can deal with this as Maru takes down a good amount of creep spread, to be fair. Just trying to limit that movement and mobility, force some energy off those creeps to replace those creep tumors, and now the Rotoron comes down as he begins to adjust to the new knowledge he has gained. Rotoron's on the way. I expect the Spy to be down shortly, but there's no second battle cruiser on the way, so this is interesting. It looks like Maru is going for tanks. He's going for armories, third, ga third base gases, but it seems like it's just a single battle cruiser into pure ground mech, and yet somehow Dark seems to realize this because he's not even building a Spire. No, he is not. It's just going to be seeing the uh, few Hellions getting some more kills. Clean up these Lings. He's a bit of a counterattack, but Mario's Hellions are in position. These Lings will be dealt with. What do you think he's noticed, Pig, to uh, go and Vestige Pit no Spire? I mean, he could definitely can go Neural Parasite to deal with battle cruisers, mm -hmm. right? You can just Neural them, teleport them into your Queens and Spores and get them killed that way. Uh, you can also get a quick Hive up for Vipers and, and the like. You can go Lurkers there with that Hive. These are all options that are available. To not even have the Spire odd, 
But yeah, there's only one BC out. A second one is on the way. No Yamato just yet. 1-1 one, one upgrades are on the way as well as the Engineering Bay. Quick fourth base, Maru. He's going to want to go for this huge macro game. And it's actually Knight of Swarmos. Wow, I was not expecting this. Get out of there before those battle cruisers deal with it. The scan finds it. This is very dangerous. He's popping out and trying to defend this area with the Queens. Putting down some creep tumors as well. Very nice way to spread that creep. Locust are coming out towards this fourth base. He's going to have to micro those. Make sure they don't land on the Hellbats and aim for the siege tanks for the command center. Yeah, he is just going to land towards the CC, but then they turn to fight the Hellbats, so not really much gained here at all with the first wave of Locust. And Maru is instantly saying, oh yeah, you know what, I kind of fancy going forward and trying to shut down this Nidus, stop this position. Everything does get back in at least, and Nidus will go down. And now the BCs decide to teleport over here where the next Nidus has been found already. So Maru teleports in, is going to take this down, and that's that Nidus denied for the moment, and Dark will not have the attack into the main. He knows it's a momentum game. This is it. Maru says, look, if I can just shut down one or two waves, slow down. Down. Those swarm hosts aren't getting value. I'm getting closer to max out. It feels like already the swarm hosts are failing to find the damage that they need. A spire is on the way behind this. Dark desperately trying to find a way in. Magfield's now on the way. Maru realizing he's dealing with swarm hosts needs more mobility. So he wants the cyclone Hellion plus the battle cruisers to deal with that. Yep, these few Ravs just trying to push the Hellions back, but the Hellions have been doing great. We just need to deal with the locals on the right side here. Oh. The Hellbats are a little bit out of position, so tanks maybe have an opportunity, but, well, honestly, still only one tank going down. There's a few more locals, so a second tank falls. Still not brilliant though, right? I mean, just feels yeah. like it could be so much more, especially when there's no Hellbats there. I, I would actually really like it to see Dark split up the Swarm host a little bit. I know that's mm. like really hard on the multitasking, but if you can start throwing them into, you know, different areas, that can definitely find effectiveness. And what Raynor found some real success with is rolling Banelings in at the same time. If you can blow those Hellbats up, you know, take a few shots on some Roaches and Lings, and then the Locusts land on the tanks, you can get a beautiful combo out. It's hard to actually sync up the right way, but the moment the Hellbats are gone, Locust just reigns supreme. Well, there's that Bane speed coming up, and 23 Banes, so maybe not for this wave, but for the waves after. He is Dark firing tanks with those Locusts, and he Ooh. gets a couple of them. Friendly Fire helping Dark out there, as on the bottom side, the BCs have found one building hatchery, and they're going to move across for another. Again, we don't have those Corruptors out right to deal with this, so it's just Queens chasing battle cruisers down, and of course, we do just have a teleport away at a moment's notice if you need to get those BCs out of there. But now they just sit here and get a gas guys are right. Just little things are going to add up in Mario's favor. And he's going to continue through to the main. And this is just damage that Dark is not dealing well with. I mean, Queens is just not great for dealing oh. with it. He doesn't have any supply free is the problem. If they kill some drones, you can replace them with Corruptors. But right now, Maru, this is the Battle Cruiser tax that you have to pay. If you don't have Neural Parasite and Burrow to deal with those, they have to pay that tax. Locust still being microed in surprisingly well, considering he's busy at home. And look at that, Banelings will bust the planetary. Nice move for Dark. Can he get the SCVs? Oh, he's going to get a few of them. 13 go down. Man, that other CC was moments away from finishing and maybe could have just lifted and gotten out of trouble. Now Maru will not have as easy a cleanup over... Oh, and is oh it but he does file into the BCs. And Maru getting a little bit over eager with the move forward there, with the teleport on top of that army. Maru. Just gonna have that little bit extra struggle now to get out of the four base setup and onto five. And Dark is just overwhelming with his army at the moment. He comes down again, tanks are in trouble immediately. This time, he didn't quite get that one which he landed on, but the Banes are showing up as well. And the fourth base oh. is once again gonna be denied. And he's still got Banes moving forward. The tanks oh. are protect, but he gets their CVs right at the end. 18 die. Mario's economy is not being allowed to settle. No, and this fourth base is the most important part. I mean, Maru always has extra SCVs, so he can handle this here and there. But right now, his gas count's really low. He desperately needs this gas. Look at that. Bile's taking down Medivacs and Hellbats all over the shop. Maru is not being as efficient as he'd like. And Dark here showing a repeat of exactly what Raynor was doing, but it feels like Maru's defense just isn't quite as clean. He's bleeding out battle cruisers. The Locusts are finding their way in, shooting into the third, shooting into the fourth. And Maru, he needs to get something up to deal with this. He's trying to restart his engineering bay upgrades. That is, of course, the plus one bio armor. His ghosts, I feel, are unable to punish at all. And this creep, it's right into his base. Yeah, I mean, Dog just has creep all the way up the ramp. The entire map is purple. And Dog does eat a couple of Yamadas, but that means it's the only Yamada damage that'll be done for the next minute or so. More Banelings morphing in. Plus three attack upgrades about to be done from Dog as well. So he's going to be dealing extra damage here with some of these units. It just feels as though Dark is unrelenting right now, but Maru does have that way somehow, some way of surviving when he shouldn't. But I mean, it feels so difficult when he can't keep manning the gases on the fourth base. Oh, okay. 
Locusts, oh, in the mineral line, killing a lot of SCVs down there to the bottom right. That's it, even just hold positioning some locusts in a mineral line can really stack up. Dark on 71 at work as he's got the entire map covered. The only thing I can criticize Dark for is the fact that he hasn't taken any of the forward bases. He's had Maru pinned back and he could have been mining out his side of the map, but Dark is focused on killing, crushing, and destroying, and he is finding massive amounts of damage. Oh, he is not holding back, is he? He gets in there with another round of Banes, immediately rebuilding the Lings to get those Banes going again. The Swarm who's are gonna go into the main this time. There shouldn't be any defense in that main, so that's some production structures that will probably go down. Drop a few into the mineral line as well, and yeah, we're gonna get SCVs, we're gonna work our way through some factories, and these Swarm hosts are just being so annoying this game. He's finding so much out of it. We're pushing in over here, the Banes actually a little clumped up, and the tank's doing some good damage. Yamato's do go Ooh. down. Mara trying to push this back, and he will get some snipes as well with those ghosts. Finally, those ghosts get a little bit of value, but this creep is still there knocking on the door, and Nidus Loom tries to go up inside the main. SCV's trying to repair. Maru needs to hang on and staunch the flow of Zerk. He's got to push this creep back, but there's, there's bloody spore crawlers in the middle of the map, Wardy. What the heck? I, I mean, what do you do? But I guess you come forward and you snipe a bunch of swarm hosts and aggressive play from Maru with those ghosts. Get some value out of them again. And that's what he's been missing. Those ghosts have been very inactive in the game so far. They've not had the chances. I mean, these locusts still coming forward, though. SCV's going down once more. That orbital command is going to be burning as well. We've got a CC nearby to replace it. But again, it's a constant struggle to keep these bases up, never mind thinking of new ones. And remember, these ghosts, they've only got plus one armor. There are 12 of them and more building, but it doesn't feel like they're the answer to anything at this moment in time. Definitely the snipes were good value, but he's got to keep veering out here with the battle cruisers, with these units. He's got to push it back. Right now, there's two battle cruisers on the map. There's only three queens and spores. There's nothing else that shoots up, and yet he's not being active with them. Maru is getting pinned back in a corner. His economy has been severely wounded. He needs to just push out. He needs to get Dark across from him uh, back to his own base. He can't have Dark just knocking on the door, throwing those Locusts into his base for free like this. It's way too much damage that he's taking. Yet this army, this does not inspire fear and confidence, Wardy. It's a pack of ghosts, a lot of Hellbats, only a few tanks and battle cruisers. That being said, what does Dark have? Mass Baneling. Mass Baneling counters all of those Hellbats and ghosts just fine. Yeah, and this is all going to happen on Creep, remember? So these Banes are going to be speedy as they start to move on through. The tanks will have to do some defending here. Banes from the other side as well. The oh. ghosts are being connected into as we do have a little bit of Roger Ravager left. The BC is sitting overhead. Dark does not have much money to rebuild with. He is a little bit ahead on army supply, but these ghosts are still finding value. The Lings will not do very well, and these battle cruisers just keep sitting here. Oh, my lord. Dark did not actually... He's got the, the swarm host, which can try to break out with the, the roaches and the Lings and the Banes coming out. There's still nothing that shoots up, though, except a few queens. Finally, Dark is going to build some Corruptors. The Battle Cruise is definitely a big nuisance. Remember that Maru's economy, it is so small right now. The Locusts are going to force Maru back, at least temporarily, but they will expire. And the Battle Cruise is going to take out one of Dark's bases. Dark, he's got a bit of damage that's being taken. He's got to chase the army down. These Corruptors could not arrive soon enough. I know, he really needs to get rid of these BCs. Maru is retreating home with everything else. He had an army supply lead there for just a moment, but just no way to justify sticking around, apparently. The Swarm Host is going to be attacked now as well as these BCs continuing around. The Corruptors really need to push these back. These things have gone uncontrolled. He needs to shut them down if he doesn't. Well, he's just going to continue to be in trouble, but that's what the Corruptors are for. And we turn around, we try and fight them, but there's enough on the way. Man, Dark has been pushed to his limits despite feeling as though he's been controlling this game. Yeah, I mean, the unit's lost tab was actually ahead for him for a long time, but now being forced to just kind of throw Banelings into this army to try and hold it, you can see that he is a little bit behind there. Locusts are still finding bits of damage. It's only 50 workers. Uh, missed hold position there. Did need to be used by Dark to make sure they focus the workers down. He's adding more Swarm Hosts, funnily enough. So he's down to 11. He says, no, nope, I need that 16 Swarm Host count. That what that's what gives me the value. Just the repeated Locust Waves wearing my opponent down. We've also got Corruptors out now. So finally, the Battle Cruiser is kind of achieving their job. That's 18 supply that should have been committed to Corruptors the entire time, but it wasn't. And that's why Dark had such an overwhelming number of units in each attack. Yeah, I mean, it definitely helped not having to, you know, basically pay the Battle Cruiser tax with your Corruptors. You know, see these uh, Locusts coming through, but the Ghosts are here to help get rid of them early. But we're going to see maybe a bit of friendly fire. Oh, the help has to delete those Locusts. 
and they don't do much at all. As Maru trying to once again stabilize on his right side, try and mine a bit of the gas over here. He does have that upper base coming online though, so that is something. And maybe this is where Dark kind of struggles for the fact that, hey, his worker count all this time has been 70. Mm. He's maybe not mined out as much of this map as he might have expected him to, considering he's had the entire map this whole time. And that's what we were talking about earlier, having the whole map like that. If your opponent's just mega turtled up, you can take those forward bases and mine them out. Banelings do get a few hits, but overall the tanks shut that down. Not a good wave for Dark. A great hold for Maru. Maru is not too far behind in supply. His economy doesn't look great, but it could cancel on the command center. A very quick pull and a spread. Only two Hellbats there going down. Not a big loss. Nope. Minerals for gas. Good trade once again as the Locusts are trying to move forward. Dropping down here. A couple of SCVs begin to fall. Looking for a depot. Looking for SCVs. Anything with those Locusts. We do see Maris starting to venture forward once again. Dark's ready to run forward, but those Balans get shut down without the Banes. It does feel like this army's just going to go snipe heavy and kill off everything. The Corruptor's on the wrong side of the map at the moment. The couple PCs will be here to help, and let's see what happens in this fight as we start to spread it out right now. Just going to be seeing these snipes continuing through and doing as much as possible. This base is going to fall on the left. Ah, this is huge damage right now, Maru. <laughs> I mean, it's such a scrappy force. A pack of ghosts with plus one armor. Two battle cruisers, a handful of Hellbats and yet it's finding the damage. Dark's got to be careful. He, he keeps, like you said, running Zerglings into plus three Blue Flame Hellbats, and they are getting one shot. I think Dark needs to keep working the natural attack angle with the big run bys. Get the Ling Roach to attack the natural. Maru's kind of spread out in this top left, defending this command center. And look at that, even picking up tanks to keep them alive. Fantastic play. Maru's micro really shining as 21 siege tanks have gone down in total this game. Not nearly as many as you'd expect with how many Locust Waves have targeted them. No, I, I mean, genuinely surprising considering we've been seeing endless amount of Locusts doing so well throughout. Maru is hanging on in there. 43 SCVs only, but it's only 69 drones of Dark, and the army supplies are similar. Some Bane's going to look to shut that work account down even further, stop all these mules from mining here. Maru is once again instant on the response. He's even going to teleport the BCs in to help, but... Mm, actually might be useful because these few lings again are surround on the few tanks over there. Ooh. These BCs are going to have work to do at, for, at first. I thought they were necessary. However, now the Corruptors are going to find them with Teleport. Oh. Down, and the Bayans keep moving through as Dark looks for some serious damage. He's finding the SCVs are returning home too soon. And the BCs, the BCs are gone. Snipe on the punish though. A whole pack of Corruptors do get sniped down. Uh, it does feel to me like Dark came out on top of that though, because remember, he's still got the Swarm Host. So the yeah. smaller he gets these armies, as long as he's got the Swarm Host left over, it just makes it harder and harder for Maru to have all the pieces to defend the next Locust Wave. And Dark can keep rotating. He can keep hitting the low ground third, the main base, and then rotate back up to the top left side of the map and hit that newest expansion. As long as Dark keeps on using his mobility, which, hey, there you go, small circling run by his darting in. I mean, it feels like Maru is the only person in the world who could have made it past the 15-minute mark in this game. But here at the 25-minute mark, it looks like Dark is finally closing in on the victory. Here we go with these Locusts looking to punish right now as Maru doesn't have many Hellbats here. The tanks, at least on Siege, not much friendly fire. The top side of the map, though, is being decimated. The work count falling even lower for Maru. Going to go below 20. Oh! Jumps is good. Never mind. Is he going to have any workers left? Oh! Three workers remain as the Balings find the money shot. And Maru's on a march down the bottom right, but I think it's too late. Not enough army supply here. He's going to snipe up at the top and way at these Corruptors, but his bases are lost. The workers are gone, and Maru has nigh on nothing. Dark needs to clean up one more army, and this game is his, and he'll be on match and tournament point. This is such good play from Dark, showing us how to pick apart the mech and wear it down the Swarmos Nidus. The Queens, the Ravages, the Lings and the Banes constantly going in, and the Locust Micro has just been so on point, the way he was splitting those Locusts up all through the early stages, trying to avoid the Hellbats. Even Fungal coming in there to add insult to injury, a Dark, he will not be stopped in this Grand Finals. He will absolutely not be. It's just going to be seeing Swarm Horse back through the center, and there it is, GG. Set up for a Widow Mind drop here from Maru. That's how he's going to try and get some damage done early. Well, the drop in the main does come on in. Widowmine starting. The Marines there as well. The Widowmine with a quick unburrow there, though, not wanting to accidentally fire on a single drone. The Marines do take a fair bit of damage, or at least the Medivac does. They have to evacuate for now. Aliens on the front looking for a potential drive-by. But they run into these Roaches. 
Luckily for Maru, Abanshi is already in production. He starts a bunker at home. He's already got a third command center building up in the high ground, so that's a very safe position. And Dark goes back to droning. He feels he's been spotted too early. He knows this Banshee's on the way. Lair is almost finished here for Dark. He's getting up towards 60 workers. Maru on about 50, but he's got 1-1. One, one going up to his five barracks, going up to the factory, the starport, the beautiful three base setup. It feels to me like Maru's got all the infrastructure for a standard game. You might look at his supply and say, hey, you're a little down on supply, a little down on work account. Oof, watch that explode once all these reactors kick in. Two minutes from now, I do expect Maru to be roughly even on supply. And, and that against a guy who's massing roaches, that is not good for Dark. No, no, it really, really is not. Maru's start of this game has been spot on. And that's why it needed to be, of course, down 1-3. Any map loss now ends this tournament in favor of Dark. Let's just have that Banshee again in, snagging the drone. And these Marines are still aggressive on the map, looking for a cancel on the fourth base, slow Dark down even further in a game that he's already feeling the pain in. Very nice there. The Stim just adds so much damage, but does overstay, loses the medevac. The Marines will have to run at home. Usually add up, he is going to put the Bailing Nest down, but man, he is an eternity away from Bailing's being useful. Never mind the inefficiency, if they don't have speed, is there any point in building them? Maru is pushing on forward though, the attack is coming now, Dark has to figure out what he's going to do about it. Two tanks are sieged up, and here we go, Maru will stim again, 1-1 one, one against Zero Zero, the tanks are putting good damage out, he will battle down one of them, the Marines stand here, continue to fight, for now Dark is holding this off, but Maru has traded well enough, that reinforcements of Maru should be problematic for Dark to deal with. Oh man, the bio killing so many Ravages. Yes, he holds on against the push for now, but there's even more coming on in. There's not that much production for Dark. Remember, it's 1-1 one, one versus no upgrades for the Zerg. Yeah, and these Roaches and Ravagers, they just can't be built fast enough right now. This bottom base is in trouble once again. You cannot afford to lose the fourth as Dark is closing in on 1-1 one, one melee upgrades, yet all he is building, Roaches and Ravagers. Dark loses the fourth base, and Maru is going to keep on trading out for now. He believes he can keep on going here. Those Ravagers exposed on the south side, the tanks are pointing from the back. Even if Dark cleans this up, the damage he's taken is huge. A tank goes the wrong way on the top left, but Maru is just talking, firing down Ravages, will evacuate what he can and just back it up because he's done the damage already. Man, yeah, Dark says never die. He's so good at just surviving these scenarios and somehow dragging the game out with a fourth command center on the way. 2-2 two, two upgrades, plus one vehicle weapons. Maru is set up for the next stage of the game. He scans the left side and you know he's got to feel really confident with that. He may look unimpressed sitting there at that computer, but he realizes, hey, all right, yeah, just casually add the eight barracks, the second factory, and that 2-2 push will be completely deadly. For Dark, he's trying to get Zerglings out with the 2-2 upgrades, but still, like we were saying, Banelings aren't gonna help you here. It, you really need some sort of big comeback play, whether that be a Broodlord switch, Ultra switch, Infestors, you need something to get you back in this game. Now we'll take a moment, get rid of some creep spread, right? Deny that information from Dark. Just make it easier for him to push just in case this game comes carries on. Just take away some of the things that Dark might use to get back into it. Creep spread is a big part of that with the map control and speed it provides to the Zerg units. Ling trying to scout out, trying to get a read on what's back over here. He did already see this army moving down the right side, but it seems like he's second guessing where it might be. Oh man, just another cancel will be deadly here. This is this is so annoying for Dark. Yeah, it really is. The Lings, the Roaches, the Ravages going to commit in. Maru doesn't have enough, apparently, and he does go for the lift up, saves one out of two tanks. Not too bad, and he's just got reinforcements coming. That's why he wants to buy time, and he's moments away from 2-2. That added up means he just wants to fight now rather than a few seconds ago. Oh, that's a dead fourth. Dark doesn't even realize this new army is here. It's so marauder heavy. It's so tanky as well. Banelings are not going to do well versus this. Well, they don't have speed either, just for the Roaches. Do what they can, a few crows of bows forcing this army back and it is going to be Maru. Continue to push tanks forward, this base really feels like it's going to be impossible to hold on to. Let's see if we can find a way. Bane speed is not far away, seven Banes on the way up. We're still not quite at the 2-2 two -two upgrades though. The base will go down, Dark gives it up, but those are the Banelings and they are under fire. They're going to finish oh! and roll into the army as Bane speed finishes. I mean, it's a nice moment as the Crows of Bars land on the medevacs, but Maru is feeling as though he's just got enough of an advantage. He keeps on chasing this down, and he believes he can end this game right here and now. And he might not be wrong. The bio keeps on coming through. Extra tanks sieging up. A few lings do stream in. Dark really trying to refuse to die. Great blinding cloud, but it's his final. Once again, Overlord coming in, looking for that information. Now, we, of course, know it's a second gas into a nice quick starport here, but... Uh... I believe this was, uh, yeah, he just doesn't want to lose the Overlord, so still being very cautious is Dark. 
drop coming in towards the main base. Dark caught unawares. Yeah, first word of mine can unload power up. He's gonna unbar it, relocate it, and just say, yeah, I'm just gonna fire this on something useful. Maybe not the eggs, though. I thought he was gonna <laughs> unbar there. And that is a little mistake from Aerith. Uh -oh. You see the Hellions looking to dive by. Uh -oh. Darkspeed is so good at defense all game long, but here are the Hellions finding the dive. He splits the drones. The Hellions might just want to try and find a way out while they can because the Lings were never going to be too far behind the defense. Fourth and fifth barracks going down for Maru as well. He is gearing up for a gigantic push. He's already got Stim. Combat Shields is on the way. The Marines, the tanks are ready. He's got the Raven to clear up the creep. That's going to allow him to get yeah. the push path ready. Yeah, being able to just say, hey, I'm going to be able to walk straight across to where I want to be. That fourth base is going to have some trouble, man. Dark never committed back in. He's got an Overlord. He's just not moved it back in to see exactly what's going on. He's playing on assumptions at this point, but Maru's switch up might just be perfect to take us to a game seven. Dark is building Lings now. The Bane Nest is almost done, but like you said, it's an eternity until Bane Lings speed. Yeah, it hasn't even started yet, so it's all about the Zerglings. The push is already here. Dark needs to go across the map and cut off the reinforcement and then get ready to flank. He cannot engage this from one side. Giving up the fourth is almost a necessity. He goes in, he gets on top of the siege tank. Oh, I mean, he gets on top of the siege tank as the Marines, though, clean up all of those Zerglings. Maru pulls back here just for a moment. We'll go the other way. That was before plus one for Maru. That was before combat shield, so... That's something to keep in mind. Those upgrades weren't there just yet, but they will be here in just a couple of seconds. Now he's pushing forward. He sees the Banelings morphing, and he will have his reinforcements arriving very soon. They're on their way over, about to reach this middle bridge. A random Baneling gets caught from behind. Bane speed has not started just yet. There we go. It does start up, sorry. And uh, the plus one armor's on the way. Maru has not started the third command center. He hasn't added reactors on his last two barracks. Now he snipes this base off. But that is far from the victory. This is exactly what Dark needed to do. He cannot let the reinforcements arrive at this push. Look at that tank position. That is so deadly. It is deadly, man. It's so tough to get on top of this. Tucked in the corner. Has so much reach. Maru's killing off Bins before they have a chance to connect. There's another one wandering in to the death zone. We dropped the order turrets. We're going to commit right now. Maru's trading out with these Zerglings. And he is able to keep on chipping away that army of Dark. 30 army supply lead for Maru. And just defending the Lings. Looking to come in from the other side already. Dark's got 2-2, two, two, but he's got to keep reinforcing this squad on the map. Look, Maru's reinforcing. Dark does not have the numbers to get on top of it. If he lets this second army join, I think Maru is going to be able to kill him. A huge army about to join up with this one, and it's made it across the bridge. It's there. And it's going to find the Zerglings as well, so that little flank of Dark will not happen. Maru is still pushing in. Bailing speed is not quite there. Maru just has to get out of the ray of these few Banes. Now they go off. New Bailing stone, but he doesn't currently have many Banes. He only has four ready to go. Maru will see the Banes on that ramp. He knows the situation. This is it from Dark, trying to move in. Oh. His legs get caught off the tank from behind, and the Marines are just unstoppable. This is too much for Maru a beautiful push taking advantage of these positions dark not having the numbers to deal with it this map warty <laughs> oh my oh Lord. my goodness there's scvs there's barracks maru's going for maru dude proxy barracks he's going to do a two racks marine rush oh. here oh my god i mean we'll see the scv in a moment there we go he sees the scv he, yeah. he, he was in his vision he should he's notice okay. that he's noticed it okay he's yeah. noticed it the stvs are now coming in that overlord needs to get to safety it's gonna head to the left side and of course those drones need to stop long distance mining yeah dark needs to get down here and defend this and that means pulling the boys the long distance mining man and they, they weren't even doing it accurately you know they were meant to mine out the mineral in the middle of the base and dark instantly drops the hatchery there he's gonna give up the low ground and just say i'll take my in base okay Wow, that is a very curious call. I was not expecting this at all. Dark ignoring it. Ten slow Zerglings are on the way, though, so is this really ignoring it if you're building this yeah. many Zerglings? Now, you can bust it with Queens, right? A Queen and mass slow Zergling, but with two bunkers up? There's no way. No. Uh, this is a really weird reaction from Dark. Maru piling on the pressure in Game 7 of this Grand Finals. There's so much on the line. I don't know if Dark has the right response. I mean, it's just weird because he never had a gas early, right? It was hatch pool and then another hatchery, but that just means you don't have gas for a counterattack either. So that's one less thing Maru has to worry about here. This hatchery is just going to go down. Maru must know that Doc is planning to re-expand in, in the main. Otherwise, I guess he could maybe assume potentially it's some kind of roach counter, but I feel like you'd start to see those soon. As time ticks by, Maru should know roughly what Doc is doing. Two bunkers up at the front are going to deny that hatchery. The barracks, one going to go for the scout, and one of them will float home. Maru's got the factory up, building a reactor and a starport behind this. And he will, of course, drop the command center as well. He even gets one of the drones as it pops out, looks for another. But they do get back to the safety. 
Dark's natural expansion on the in-base has built. And that is a full expansion. So don't get me wrong, he's got an expansion mining. The command center's only just started for the Terran. That seems kind of good. There's still a problem, though. That's a whole big group of the men with the guns. It is, and Dark realizing now, hey, I can make quite a lot of these drones. Let's get a few more lings out and just make sure I'm going to be safe here. Queens will push that back little by little. The creep tumor out the front does give some good vision and potential movement as well. He's going to use that to spread through the base right now. It is Dark, and uh, the medevac on the way. Very common follow-up. And somewhat predictable, I gotta say. You know, we were actually just talking about this in the green room earlier. How, you know, hey, if they go proxy barracks, you know they're always gonna go for a Hellion drop afterwards. That's been the standard for so long, but it's the flexibility and the maneuverability of it that makes it hard to deal with, especially when you've got a delayed Zergling speed and not that many queens. I mean, Maru, he, he's got no combat shield started just yet, but he's got four barracks pumping Marines, plus one upgrades on the way. His first two tanks are out. A third command center does start up here for Maru, but he's gonna be very committed to this push and Dark does need to start building Roach Ravager. He's rounding out his drones for his three base saturation. He's thinking about taking a fourth base. Is Dark? I do think Dark is in an exceptional position here in this game seven. But Maru, it's time for him to start thinking about moving out and getting some damage done. And he's just chilling right now. Yep, just gonna go Medivax. He leaves the two tanks at home. So clearly doesn't feel like he can get going. But I mean, Dark's out in 66 drones. The Roach Ravager is on the way. The timing is very visible right now. The idea of what Dark wants to get done Maru does keep building tanks though, and if he keeps building tanks, that will help him in this defense because this is a map where you can hold three bases on one choke point unless those minerals on your natural get mined out. Well, if he's not committing that hard to the pressure, I would like to see Dark add an infestation pit. Roaches will come back to defend along with the Zerglings. Hellion's getting shut down. Yeah, I mean, Maru just pulled the medevac away. Would rather keep the medevac alive, and he does draw units up over in this direction. He's going to have Marines in. There's Ravagers on the right side. That might be in a good grab, but this fourth base will also fall. Also a decent grab here. Cancels last second, and Maru lifts it up, and he will just get out. Keeps all but two Marines alive. All right, Dark is droning up. He's going to rebuild the fourth. Infestation Pit drops down as well as the Baneling Nest. Dark is saying, okay, let's swap back into melee. I love this idea. He wants to get the Baneling speed, get that fourth base up, secure a fifth as well. And he's got so much map control with the Roach Ravager. It forces the Terran to turtle back. This gives you a chance to just push that creep out. It can grow across the map. And I feel like Dark, he's actually done so well. I love that he had such a good plan for this map, Wardy. Yeah. Just the idea of clearing up the back base for a good economic gasless opening. Turns out he had the contingency for the proxy barracks. And I mean, Maru, he's following in an age-old tradition of Korean Terran champions. Proxy barracksing in Game 7. They've won so many championships doing this, especially in this matchup. I know, man. I know. And yet here we are with Dark. A little bit of a supply, good work account. Maru's starting to push, his 1-1 will be kicking in soon, plus one already done, but plus one armor. Still building here, the Roach Ravager count is looking great. I just don't see what Maru could really do. I mean, maybe you get this bottom side base, but Dark's already building a different base to expand to as well, right? So you'll have an alternate fourth if he needs it. Obviously, this push does not have tanks, so it's just bio. Yep. You can stim in, lift out of there, and evacuate immediately if you need to. No risk push here, doesn't want to commit as hard to it. But the Queens do cause him to back off. Good transfuse and defense there. Hive's almost finished. Is that a second or third factor in the way? Looks like second factory going down now, as well as that fourth command center. About halfway it done for Maru. Now, the problem with Roach Ravager is it can be hard to actually attack in and, and take the opponent out, right? So you could be way out on the map control, the drones, but it can sometimes be hard to leverage this advantage. We know how good Maru is at turtling up into the late game. He very well may be able to survive and make a ghost transition from here. It's going to clean out a little bit more group spread, but once again, just going to have to evacuate. That's Maru's plan. Never risk these units. They can always escape. And that's the power of it, is he does put some medivacs away. So he's going to keep two out on the map as a drop. And he's going to bring the other two back to the right. Spotted by a Zergling, though. Just trying to multi-prong it now, realizing that initially he wasn't getting much done. Man, Dark has units everywhere, so he knows exactly what Maru is planning. Marine stimming up forwards, trying to push this creep back. Such good creep spread for Dark. Ultra Cavern goes down as well as, of course, a couple of Vipers will be joining in to counter those siege tanks with blinding clouds. Now, uh, does need to remember plus two melee does Dark now that the plus one has finally kicked in. But uh, Banelink's coming out. The Ravages do chew up a lot of supply. Remember, three supply each. So the supply can be a little deceptive here with uh, solid 10 Roaches and nine Ravages taking up a large portion of that.
Maru looking to maybe go through the top side, but he's probably worried about the Watchtower vision. Doc doesn't actually hold it right now, but Maru doesn't know that, of course, so... A little bit uncomfortable as to what he wants to do. Maru does expand downwards. He doesn't take the forward base. He wants to play a defensive base here. And this base is defensive. The choke's into. You've got to knock down rocks to open up that space. He wants to get up to Ghost. He wants to play this slow. That's where Maru plays his best TVZ, and that's what he's on the way for right now. Five dropper lords on the way. Oh my gosh. Dark is planning <laughs> a mass Ling Baneling drop on the in base expansion. This is such a clever way to take advantage of the map. I mean, we're here thinking, hey, these players haven't played these maps. Dark, I don't know if he was trolling or not, saying, oh, I haven't even looked at the map. I don't even have builds. Oh, yes, he does have builds for these maps. He is so well prepared for Stargazers. Right now, loading up a massive Ling drop in the north of the map. And it is heading towards that natural one Baneling hidden in there as well. Maru's got a big attack on the front at the same time. Yeah, he's got to deal with multiple places. Tank's getting blind and clouded, but he does hit the EMP. So only two of the tanks blind and clouded, but Ravager Bows are hitting the rest of them. It's a big, messy fight, but it's the Lings and the Nat that can do the damage. 12 SCVs going down, but all of these Ravagers keep on falling. Massive files at the end there, though. 14 SCVs, Link's still not dealt with, and Dark has taken a humongous lead. Six siege decks going down. SCVs getting torn up in the main, and the natural goes trying to come back. Maru did not see this coming. Nobody uses Zergling drops like this, but Dark surprising his opponent, borrowing Zerglings in all the different bases. He is playing a wily, sneaky style ultralisk transition on the way behind it. Just when it felt like Maru was stabilizing, getting towards a fifth expansion, getting his ghost count up, Dark brings out all of the surprises. Scans needed to clean out these uh, lings as well, which is just frustrating at this point. He's finally gonna stop it, but those dropper lords are still alive, so there's nothing stopping Dark loading up and trying to go again and make, again, apart from maybe the threat of ghost sniping those overlords down before they get there. And those lings on the ramp are just watching to see when Maru has brought everything out of the main base. Dark is maxed out, and Dark is readying himself to go once more. I'd love to see an attack on the south side. If you can bust that planetary on the fourth, that would be huge. More drops, just small ones going in towards this base. And even that, that's enough to easily beat a siege tank. This is just going to cause a distraction. It's basically free huge attack on the front at the same time. Oh, Mario only had one of his tanks siege. The other does get there, but it's taken down so quickly. It doesn't feel like enough bio right now. He's running to the planetary fortress looking for aid, but Dark is going to rampage through. The Bailings are not being stopped. Goodbye, oh. planetary. Goodbye, oh. SDVs. 47 workers. Oh, my. He Lord. makes it 50! Dog is gonna win Valencia! That was an absolutely amazing turnaround. A fantastic series, and he gets it done in the end with the 4-3. to three.